All right, good afternoon. My name is JT Monashagan. Uh, JT M A N O U S H A G I A N and I'm the I'm the police chief here in Lake Worth. I appreciate you all uh coming out and uh today we're going to be addressing the uh, the incident involving a former Lake Worth officer um who struck and injured uh Dustin Bates. Uh, following a, a motorcycle pursuit on November 23rd of 2020. So that afternoon, the officer was on patrol on Lake Worth Boulevard and observed a motorcycle um, that was whose license plate was obscured. He also noticed that the motorcycle had been spray painted, which in his training and experience led him to believe that the motorcycle could have been stolen. So the traffic violation was the obscured uh, license plate or no license plate. Um, so he attempted to initiate a traffic stop. Uh, and as soon as he did that, the, uh, the motorcycle accelerated away at a high rate of speed. Um, the total pursuit only lasted a few minutes. Um, in essence, the motorcycle rider, Mr. Bates, took the cloverleaf, got on to 820, uh, went down 821 exit, and as he was taking the exit, failed to negotiate the exit and actually wrecked the motorcycle. Uh, he was so far ahead of the officer at that time, the officer was considering discontinuing uh, the pursuit due to a, a loss of visual contact uh, with the suspect. But once he topped the hill and he saw a cloud of dust, he knew that the motorcycle had wrecked. And at that time, he saw uh, Mr. Bates running across the field. Um, as he tracked Mr. Bates, with his eyes, he began to veer off the roadway, um, just as uh, many people do. Where your eyes go, the wheel of your car follows. Um, once he left the roadway, he immediately applied the brakes in his unit, uh, but the, ro or the grass conditions that day uh, were a little bit damp. We had had a, just a light uh, coating of moisture, and so on top of you know trying to slow down a vehicle uh, on grass it was also wet so as soon as he applied the brakes the car began to go into a slide um, the officer continued to apply the brakes and continued sliding until he collided uh, with mr bates uh, it's been wrongfully reported that mr bates was run over at no time was he run over he was just struck um, so he never went underneath the car the vehicle's uh, tires never uh, ran over him. Uh, he was just struck with the front of the vehicle. Um, not to minimize the injury, that, that's a significant impact, um, but just to be clear about the facts. Um, following any critical law enforcement incident, it is the policy of the Lake Worth Police Department to invite in an unbiased outside law enforcement agency to conduct an investigation into what happened. Uh, so in this case, we reached out to the Grand Prairie Police Department, who we had a prior arrangement with to investigate our critical law enforcement incidents. Um, and we also reached out to the Tarrant County Sheriff's Office. Um, both departments sent out teams of investigators. The Tarrant County Sheriff's Office handled the crash investigation. The Grand Prairie Police Department handled the criminal investigation. 
while our department opened an internal affairs investigation or an administrative investigation. Um, through that process, uh, or at least through the criminal investigation, the Lake Worth Police Department is completely hands-off. Uh, we uh, remain uh, neutral, and we allow that outside agency to conduct their investigation without our influence. Only at its conclusion are we presented with the findings. So um, the Grand Prairie Police Department conducted a thorough investigation. Um, that investigation concluded um, through a, a traffic crash analysis and overhead uh, drone footage and things like that, uh, that the tire marks from the officer's car indicated the presence of a yaw mark, uh, which is where the tires lose traction and the rear tire doesn't follow the same track as the front tire. Um, and that indicates a loss of traction uh, immediately prior to the officer uh, striking the suspect who was running away. Um, Grand Prairie's investigation also noted that the damage to the motorcycle and the injury uh, to the defendant indicates that he could have suffered the injury to his leg or knee when he lost control of the motorcycle um, as opposed to the collision with the police car. Um, it, there's just no way to know. Um, it should be noted that uh, I was notified of this incident uh, right after it occurred. And I personally went to the hospital to visit uh, with Mr. Bates. Uh, he was not conscious at that time. I think he was under uh, sedation. Um, but we do take uh, pride in being a compassionate police department. And so uh, I felt that it was appropriate to at least uh, go personally and uh, you know offer uh, my sympathies and uh, to let him know that the incident would be investigated properly. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, there was a criminal investigation uh, done by the Grand Prairie Police Department. Um, the findings of that investigation were presented to a Tarrant County Grand Jury. And on March the 4th of 2021, the Grand Jury were, uh, voted to take no criminal action in this case. There was also an inquiry by the Department of Justice and the FBI, and they also declined to take no action after a review. So that leaves us with just the administrative investigation. Um, our team conducted an internal affairs investigation and uh, investigated two allegations of misconduct. One was for Lake Worth PD policy 6.01 use of force, uh, subsection procedures for pursuits, uh, subsection F, uh, which details the primary officer's responsibilities in a pursuit, uh, which states the officer's primary responsibility in a pursuit is the safe operation of the vehicle. Um, and the allegation of misconduct for that violation was sustained. The second violation was for Lake Worth PD policy 2.01 rules of conduct, maintenance of property department vehicles. And that policy states in part, Members shall operate department vehicles and other equipment in such a manner as to avoid injury to persons or damage to property. That allegation of misconduct was also sustained. For those violations, the officer was issued an 80-hour suspension, which for uh, our department is two weeks. That's two work weeks uh, for uh, the officer. Uh, the officer was also assigned to administrative duties until... Uh, the criminal investigation was presented to the grand jury uh, and uh, voted on by the grand jury until there were findings from the criminal investigation. Um, the officer also underwent additional training uh, specifically to the operation of emergency vehicles. He was also ordered to create and present a critical incident debrief uh, back to the field operations uh, unit of the department on lessons learned. So what did you learn? Uh, from this experience. Um, since then, um, the officer has resigned from the Lake Worth Police Department. Uh, that's a decision that he made um, after consulting with his family, and that is a decision uh, that we support. With that, um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Can you take us back to the second you actually saw the dash cam video as the police chief? Uh, my heart sank. 
Um, what I saw on the video is not in keeping with uh, the actions we expect our officers to take. Um, it's an honor and a privilege to serve the public, and we should always do everything in our power to ensure uh, even suspects that we pursue are safe. And in this case, um, you know, we caused injury uh, to someone, and it was due to the officer's uh, poor judgment. And so as the leader of the organization, uh, I was disappointed. I was sad. Um, you know, I, I wish that it wouldn't have happened. I wish that different decisions had been made. Um, but uh, part of my role is taking the situations I'm presented with and handling them uh, with grace, handling, handling them in a way that our community would be proud of. And, you know, in that moment, there was nothing I could do to correct it other than ensure a proper investigation was conducted. Um, so... I do not. Uh, Officer Granado was employed by the Grand Prairie Police Department as a jailer prior to putting himself through the police academy and then coming here as a police officer. Um, but I can say in terms of bias, um, we handled this case according to best practice and took steps that are well beyond what other departments take in similar situations. For example, we could have investigated this incident all on our own, uh, which certainly, in my opinion, would have implied more bias, uh, but we didn't. We chose to go out and ask another agency who has no stake in whether or not uh, any criminal wrongdoing is found on this officer come in and look at it. Um, to my knowledge, no one associated with the major crimes unit in Grand Prairie had ever worked with or for or uh, you know, senior to Officer Granado. Um, they're a very large, very competent police department who's accustomed to conducting these types of investigations. And so there would be no reason for me to believe that they would have come into that with any bias for this officer. In fact, um, you know, we can confirm this with Chief Sesney over at Grand Prairie, but at the time, I don't know that they knew he was a former employee. So, Yes. That's correct. How fast, you said that the officer had sort of slowed down. How fast was the officer going, according to you, whenever this all occurred, you know, in the first place, before sure. he hit the brakes? Sure. Uh, so, according to the report, uh, the the officer was traveling at approximately 95 miles an hour when he took the exit ramp um, and began to initially apply the brakes. Um, he slowed to approximately 84 miles per hour uh, while still uh, taking the exit ramp, um, continued to apply the brakes and slowed to 74 miles an hour. Um, then he left the roadway and went into the grass which slowed the officer to 51 miles per hour with the brake still being applied. And then at the time of collision, uh, his speed was approximately 45 miles per hour with the brake still being applied. And is going 95 in, in road conditions like that, you said it was damp. Um, mm -hmm. Is that allowable under the department policy? It is but just because you can doesn't mean you should. So our policy allows our officers and our supervisors to use their judgment to make decisions. And I wasn't there, uh, but that's certainly a decision-making process I expect our officers and our supervisors to go through to consider traffic, uh, you know, road conditions and things like that when making that decision. My last question is, yes, when did the officer resign? Um, I believe it was 
December 1st? December 1st. Yeah, Thank you. I apologize. I wasn't, I don't know off the top of my head. What, if anything, have you learned about the license plate and the motorcycle since all this So we, we do know that the motorcycle was not stolen, um, but it should be noted that upon his arrest, uh, Mr. Bates was found to have a parole warrant. He was found in possession of half an ounce of methamphetamine. Um, and I believe that that's it. So he had a, a lengthy criminal history. Um, he committed a felony by fleeing in a motorcycle. He was also committing a felony by being in possession of half an ounce of methamphetamine. Um, and then on top of all of that, had a parole warrant. Was the license plate, did it match the motorcycle? Uh, that I don't know. Uh, just off the top of my head, I'd have to do some research to find out. Chief, if you can, and thanks for taking my question FaceTime. I appreciate that. Sure. Um, hindsight 2020, you're the chief of police. If you could go back, how would you want this pursuit to have been handled? What did your officer specifically do wrong? Was it leaving the roadway? Um, you know, you talked about the speed was allowed, but maybe sometimes you shouldn't. How would you have liked to see this play out if you could go back in time? Thanks for your question, David. Um, I want to be careful not to Monday morning quarterback my officers. Um, they are put into incredibly difficult situations. Um, there was a lot going on that day in a vehicle pursuit. You're considering a lot of things. Um, you know, if I had to say one thing I wish wouldn't have happened, I wish we wouldn't have collided with Mr. Bates. I wish he would have surrendered. I wish that we could have taken him into custody peacefully without injury to him or anyone else. Um, but unfortunately, those are not the facts. Do you know what that parole warrant, but I mean, obviously it's, it's a parole warrant, but do you know what led to him being on call and having to do a record check? I, I do not know why his parole was revoked or what charge, um, he, he was revoked on. I, not off the top of my head. I don't know. Does what happened on camera match your pursuit policy? Yes. So there were no pursuit policy violations. Um, these all had to do with uh, operating the vehicle in such a way that it would not cause injury to someone else. So the Lake Worth Police Department does allow the pursuit of vehicles. And we believe that our community expects us to pursue felonious criminals, uh, criminals who uh, break the law. Um, they expect us to go after them and bring them to justice. Um, but we believe that in doing that, it must be done um, in the safest way possible. But there are inherent risks with everything, including uh, vehicle pursuits. Um, again, as I pointed out, our pursuit policy allows for officers and supervisors to consider all the facts and circumstances uh, when making the decision to pursue, to continue a pursuit, or to discontinue a pursuit. Like I said before, this pursuit um, lasted only about three minutes. If I were to uh, speculate on what the next minute or two uh, probably would have entailed, uh, it probably would have been called off. Um, had the suspect not wrecked the motorcycle and was no longer in sight, the pursuit would have likely been terminated. So this one continued beyond the crash simply because the suspect was now running on foot and the officer uh, wanted to make an attempt to apprehend him. But unfortunately, drove off the roadway, lost control, and accidentally struck Mr. Bates. Have you seen the video? Does any of this rise to the point where you as chief would have terminated the officer for what happened or I it's mean, I, I get the two week suspension and sure. there had to be an investigation and all that but at any point as chief did you consider firing him absolutely i absolutely considered it um we believe that using progressive discipline and procedural justice is important when dealing and administering discipline for our officers. And uh, we do have to take into account that everyone makes mistakes in their job. And um, 
you know, of course, we, we have a large responsibility in that. It's not lost on me or our officers. Um, but uh, considering the fact that this is a young officer, um, very early in his career, um, there, there is an understanding on my part as the chief of police that mistakes are going to be made. And we would never have seasoned, tenured officers who had had the opportunity to learn from mistakes if we fired them all after their first mistake. So um, after review of the circumstances, knowing that this was an accident, that the officer did not intentionally mean to strike Mr. Bates with his car, um, he accepted responsibility for that. He was disciplined for that. Um, I believe that that was the right decision given the circumstances. Did I consider it? Absolutely. Would I consider it again in the future? Absolutely. There are conversations, you said he didn't break policy, but are there conversations to potentially change policy, amend, or add things to maybe make things more safe for both the police officers and the sure. potential suspects? So he didn't break policy in terms of the pursuit policy. He did violate our policy, um, which I'll point out uh, as a means of transparency is completely available on our website. Um, that is a, a point that, that we want to make. We don't have any secretive policies that we change um, without the public's notice. It is all uh, available on our website under the Trust Through Transparency tab. Um, you can scroll down and you can uh, view every one of our policies. Um, so in this case, he did violate policy and he was disciplined for that. It was on November the 28th, and I should point out that the internal affairs investigation does not typically conclude prior to the criminal investigation, but I believed after I was presented uh, with the findings that they were so overwhelming that I was prepared to make a decision and administer discipline even before the criminal case uh, went forward. So it's not as though he, he served that suspension and then returned. He, he resigned after receiving notice that the suspension would be uh, uh, No, he, he did return back to work. Okay. So this is uh, November of last year, of 2020. So um, he was placed on administrative leave while the investigation was conducted. Once it concluded, he, we administered the suspension. Then he returned to work in an administrative capacity only, not in uniform on the street, until the case was presented to the grand jury and they took no action. Only when it was officially and completely finished was he returned to duty. Then in December of this year, he chose to resign. Um, not, not anything out of the normal. Um, you know, officers, young officers, um, do make mistakes. We all do. Um, so there, there were a couple of write-ups in his past where we had addressed conduct that was, uh, that needed to be corrected, um, but nothing major, no prior suspensions or, or anything like that. Complaint from the public at all? Not that I'm aware of. I think it was all, you know, internal. approximately three to four years. Um, I don't know offhand, but we can get you that information if you want to stick around. Um, he and I actually hired on the same day, which would have been March of 2018. So, I don't do the math, Al almost four years. Anything else? Anyone else? Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, I do want to point out, it was reported, um, or the telegram ran a quote um, that I wanted to address um, and simply say that that quote by the officer on scene uh, does not reflect the attitudes and principles of our department. Um, specifically, the insinuation uh, of welcome to Lake Worth. Um, we are a police department that takes tremendous pride in providing excellent service and protection to the public and to the people 
uh, that we arrest. Um, we take great pride in treating all people with dignity and respect. And uh, the statement by this officer does not reflect that. And, um, you know, we, we have and, and will continue to address that. Um, I just want to be clear that uh, all people are welcome here. Um, if you come here, and I think what the officer was trying to say is if you come here and you commit crime, then you should expect to see one of our officers. You should expect an encounter with one of our officers. Uh, but you should also expect that encounter, even if lawful uh, action needs to be taken, to be excellent, to be professional, um, to be compassionate. So just wanted to make sure that that was addressed. Thank you.